So now I'm off to doing my final checkout test. And this test I'm going to be feeding in a square wave. And what I've got, I've got the audio generator that's hooked up to my aux input. Um, you can't use the phono input because of the equalization. Uh, your square wave is not going to come out looking right. But I'm going to go ahead and do another video on checking out the phono input or the phono, basically the phono preamp section. Um, I have an oscilloscope that's connected across my dummy load back here. I don't know if that can be seen. Um, lighting's kind of bad. My test bench is too small. Anyways, I've got two. I have a dual trace uh, oscilloscope and I've got both probes hooked up across the dummy output and I've got the my 8 ohm um, load resistors in place and um, the first thing of course I, I had to do was check the output of my audio generator here and see if it was actually putting out a decent square wave because right now I'm going to be feeding in a 200 um, Hertz square wave and first thing I did I, I hooked the my oscilloscope straightly up directly up to the audio generator and see if that was putting out um, well your square wave has to be exactly flat on the top and straight up and down it's basically supposed to be square um, and as far as the signal that I'm feeding in if you want to know about the amplitude I'm basically I'm right now I'm feeding in about into the aux input a 250 millivolt signal. Of course, it can't be too high because you're going to go into overload, and it can't be too low because um, that's going to basically going to throw you off too. So, um, and also, if you look here at my scope. I like to adjust it so I get about two, basically two cycles. You can see here, I basically got two or or even three, three cycles. I would have to go ahead. Let me go ahead and change the horizontal here, something like that. So, anyways, I like to use two. Oh, and if you're feeding a, a low frequency signal, you might not be able to see here the, um, basically the vertical traces here, going up and down. But that's normal. That's nothing basically to be concerned about with your low frequencies here. And also, for these low frequencies, I put the scope. Of course, you got your AC or DC input. And I put it in the DC position for low frequencies. Because if not, this is kind of like what happens. You can see I'm already getting the tilt right here. Which is... Uh, which would then throw off your results. In fact, I can do that to both. And if I even go down more in frequency, let me go down even more. So now me basically feeding in this 200 hertz square wave, that's going to cover all the way from 20 hertz to 2000 hertz. And then if I feed in a 2000 hertz uh, square wave, that's going to cover down from basically from 200 hertz all the way up to 20,000 Hertz which covers basically the um, audio I guess what the human being the, what's called the audio uh, spectrum what's audible to the human ear is basically what I want to say because um, well, when we use the square wave we have to remember that the square wave that's composed of the fundamental frequency which in this case is going to be the 200 Hertz on feeding in or say if I had the audio generator set up for a thousand Hertz the fundamental would be the 1000 so basically the fundamental that's just the frequency that we feed in now the square wave that's going to be composed of the fundamental frequency plus odd numbered harmonics um, which it probably goes out to an infinite amount but that w wouldn't be usable anymore I think it's acceptable to say okay um, the odd hot you can basically go up I would say up to basically 10 times so if you're 200 times 10 would be 2,000 or 2,000 times 10 would be 20,000 so so 
Now our 200 hertz square wave, that would consist of the original fundamental, again, which would be 200 plus frequencies at 600, because 200 times 3, 3 is an odd number, or it would be 200 times 5, which would be the next up odd number, that would be 1,000, and 200 times, let's see, 200 times 7, that would be the next up then, would be 1,400, and so on. So, again, that works downward, that works downward too. So let's go ahead and start out with the 200 hertz square wave. In fact, I'm already set up here on my generator times 10, and this is 20, it's 200, and of course my audio generator is in the square wave position. Let's take a look at the waveform now. Okay, kind of tilted there while we're still in the AC position. So this is basically what I'm looking at now um, I would say of course your I have to add that your tone controls and your loudness control has to be off and your tone control has to be flat because here's what happens if you turn in your loudness control yikes or um, now I'm, I think I'm messing with the bass control there and here I'm messing with the um, treble control and this thing's even got a balance control. You gotta balance this thing out. So again, we're looking for a perfectly flat response. And I see one of the channels, the lower channel. I don't know if that can be seen. It's got a slight tilt to it. I would say that's still good. I mean, it's not excellent, but it's good. And I'm not sure whether I want to go ahead and change the, all the capacitors out most likely that's caused by a capacitor um, I think when it's tilted like that that would indicate a phase shift which would be caused by um, well what changes phase either capacitors or inductors and probably a capacitor and tone control somewhere let me go ahead and go feed in a 2000 Hertz uh, square wave now so now this is a 2000 Hertz square wave, which basically is going to check everything from um, from 200 Hertz up to 20,000 Hertz. And I'd, I'd say it's looking good right there. So um, I would conclude that this receiver now doesn't have any major problems at the moment. So I think I'm going to leave it at that because I don't have enough capacitors here to change some out on the tone control circuits if not I would go have to, have to order them and that's going to be um, I've got so many other projects to do anyways um, thanks for watching